Good afternoon all. Uh, in previous lectures, we have already discussed about the converters. So, uh, what what are the converters? Uh, converters which convert from AC to DC or AC to DC, and the converter which convert from AC to DC that is called your AC converter. The converter which convert from uh, DC to AC that is called your inverter. So, in this lecture, uh, we will discuss about this. Total time period. That is 
three ohm plus three ohm, and the frequency is always inversely proportional to one by two. So frequency of proper switching of proper frequency and average output voltage V D C is equal to B T on upon T on plus T O V D C is equal to B T on upon T and T is equal to B. But T on upon T is equal to B. That is your D C cycle. So average output current I D C is equal to V D C R. IDC IDC is equal to V by R into T on the one thing is equal to V by R into D. So R and S value of output voltage V naught is equal to root of one by T integration. So V naught V square V naught is square D. So you can easily get the output R and S voltage by this equation, and the average output current is equal to V by R. So you can see from this diagram. This is an average output voltage. So this is very important formula. The average output voltage is depending upon your duty cycle. Okay. If you uh, if you change the duty cycle, the output voltage will be changed because the input voltage V is fixed. Okay. So uh, by changing the uh, duty cycle, V you can get the average output voltage. Now, second thing is your IDC is equal to VDC upon R. So IDC is equal to V by R, T on upon T is equal to V by R into V. R is the value of output voltage. V not is equal to one by V integration V of T on T on the square upon V. So by putting the output average output voltage here, you can easily get the R is voltage. So V not is equal to V. So R is output voltage. V not is equal to root one by V integration V of T on T square D. V not is equal to integration V square upon T into V not is equal to one upon T not on V into V. T on is equal to one V into V. So output power T not is equal to V not I not, but I not is equal to V not upon R. So output power T not is equal to V not is square upon R. T not is equal to V square upon R. The second input resistance of chopper R I. Is equal to V upon I C R I is equal to R upon V, and the output voltage can be varied by varying the duty cycle. So um, this is very important formula. Second input resistance of the chopper and the output voltage can be varied by varying the duty cycle. As a top line goes, so the output DC uh, voltage can be varied by the following methods: first circuit modulation control. Constant frequency operation, value frequency control, and first uh, circuit modulation. T on is very keeping problem frequency at some problem frequency constant. Now the voltage is very high, very long, and very strong. So this is your output voltage. Value frequency control, problem frequency at is very keeping the T on or T off constant to alter. Output voltage V. Frequency has to be varied over a lifetime. This method produces harmony in the output and for large T of load current will become the same. Now we can further divide this proper uh, into two parts and uh, other parts. So this is our method of control. So method of control of copper is depending upon your pulse width modulation and value frequency. Change the width of your pulse and the value of the pulse width and the pulse width modulation. This T one is very keeping copper frequency at zero T constant. So output voltage is very
this uh, field which is uh, one is yours uh, you can see that this is your circuit theory where mostly you use uh, capacitor inductors diode in circuit theory uh, for analysis any circuit in systems and control th theory you can also use power electronics in signal processing you are using power electronic devices in electronics you are also using power electronic devices in electromagnetics you are using power electronic devices in power systems you are also using power electronic devices in electrical machine you are also using power electronic devices in simulation and computing system you are also using power electronic devices and in solid state physics you are also using power electronic devices components or uh, you know equipments so this is your interdisciplinary nature of power electronics now let's come to the applications so what are the applications of power electronic devices uh, so this is the list of you know uh, applications of power electronics where you can easily understand that most of the them you are using in your day to day life uh, which is controlled by your power electronics components or power electronic devices for example heating and lighting control so heating for heating and lighting control you can also use your power electronic components in induction heating you are also using your power electronics component uninterruptible power supplies in which is your ups uh, so you can you are using ups in your daily routine life uh, where uh, the power supplies which is used that is your ups which is made of your power electronic devices then this is your next is your fluorescent lamp ballast passive or active electric power transmission lines automotive electronic electronic igni uh, ignitions and motor drives battery charges alternators energy storage electric vehicle using power electronic devices then your alternative power sources solar wind and fuel cells uh, there are wide range of uh, uh, you know applications of your power electronic devices next is your task of power electronics devices so this is your rectification referring to conversion of ac voltage to dc voltage so ac voltage to uh, uh, dc the power electronic devices is used for rectification where you can convert from dc to ac conversion dc to dc conversion and ac to ac conversion so this is the task of power electronics where rectification uh, referring to conversion of ac voltage to dc voltage for example in photovoltaic cell that uh, the sunlight is uh, falling on the you know pv arrays which is uh, which is con which is using as a solar controller uh, and uh, solar controller which is converting it into from ac to dc so here you are using power electronic devices now this dc is charging the battery now this dc is uh, uh, paired to your inverter where dc current is converted into your ac voltage and this ac voltage or ac buses is used in diesel generators or ac loads so this is the example where you can see that in photovoltaic cell uh, we are also using power power semiconductor devices now next is your converters so electronic power converter is the term that is used to refer to a power electronic circuit that converts voltage and current from one form to another so uh, there are converters which can convert from ac to dc dc to ac also so uh, first we come to your rectification so what is rectification rectifier means that it is converting your ac voltage to dc voltage and in inverter this is converting your dc voltage to an ac voltage now chopper or a switch mode power supply that converts a dc voltage to another dc voltage 
cyclo converter and cyclo inverter converting your ac voltage to another ac voltage now let's start with your rectification or rectifier so rectifier may be classified as uncontrolled and controlled rectifiers so controlled rectifiers can be further divided into semi controlled and fully controlled rectifiers so first we have to understand that what is rectification so rectification means to conversion from ac alternating current to direct current or ac to dc which can be converted by the help of your diode and scrs so initially we were uh, we used diode we used to use diode in for rectification in which diode is a you know unidirectional device which convert only positive half wave to into your dc but in uh, you know if you, if you want to use your uh, fully uh, full rectifier then you have to use uh, two or more diode which is connected in anti parallel so uh, rectification may be classified as uncontrolled and controlled rectifier so controlled rectifiers can be further divided into semi controlled and fully controlled rectifiers and uncontrolled rectifier circuits are built with diodes and fully controlled rectifier circuits are built with scrs so both diodes and scrs are used in semi controlled rectifier circuit now we come to the rectification uh, rectifiers means that uh, single phase semi controlled bridge rectifier single phase fully controlled bridge rectifier three phase three pulse star connected rectifier double three phase three pulse star connected rectifier then three phase semi controlled bridge rectifier three phase fully controlled bridge rectifier and double three phase fully controlled bridge rectifier with ipt so uh, there are a wide range of you know rectifiers and uh, these rectifiers can be used for uh, uh, rectification purpose which can be divided into many categories one is your single phase semi controlled bridge rectifier single phase fully controlled bridge rectifier three phase three pulse star connected rectifier double three phase three pulse star connected rectifier and three phase semi con controlled bridge rectifier so there are many type of rectification by which you can get different type of your output and uh, uh, there are uh, you know few uh, there are uh, a small difference between these rectifiers one is that the semiconductor devices or components which you are using is uh, Uh, different different in each uh, rectifier and the output voltage is also different which you are getting from these different rectifier and one more difference is that one is your single phase and uh, another one is your three phase so in single phase only you are using one phase and three phase you are using three phase so these are your single phase and three phase rectifiers now dc to ac conversion so what is your dc to ac conversion the converter that changes a dc to ac is called an inverter so earlier inverter were built with scrs since the circuitry required to turn the scr off tends to be complex so other power semiconductor devices such as bipolar junction transistors and power mosfets insulated gate bipolar transistors and mosfet controlled thyristors are used nowadays so currently only the inverters with a high power rating such as 500 kilowatt or higher so dc to ac conversion 
so this uh, dc to ac conversion can be used uh, can be done by using different kind of components or different kind of uh, power electronic devices for example your mosfet insulated gate bipolar transistor um, mos controlled uh, thyristors and different different kind of components so currently only the inverters with a high power rating such as 500 kilowatt or higher you are using this is the higher rating of your inverter so inverter you, uh, you are using uh, from dc to ac conversion now uh, inverters is used at your home in emergency lighting system when your power uh, power cut is occur power cut occur then your inverter comes into the conduction and you are getting uh, you know electricity at your home so this is very important uh, uh, thing Uh, which is uh, most necessary for uh, uh, you know uh, our uh, day to day life and uh, so inverters are used in emergency lighting system ac variable speed drives uninterrupted power supplies and frequency converters so this is all about your dc to ac conversion now dc to dc conversion so when the scr came into use a dc to dc converter circuit was called a chopper so chopper is basically used from dc to dc conversion from uh, uh, you know constant dc to variable dc so nowadays an scr is rarely used in a dc to dc converter either a power bjt or a power mosfet is normally used in such a converter and this converter is called a switch to mode power supply so switch to mode power supply means dc to dc conversion so dc to dc conversion can be done by using your you know a chopper circuit so chopper circuit may be your you know step down chopper or step up chopper ply back converter or resonant converter so chopper is used as a ac transformer for example in ac transformer that you are using ac voltage as an input and the voltage is converted uh, at a, a step down or a step up by the help of transformer uh, like this in dc to dc conversion you have to use chopper uh, uh, and you have to replace the transformer by your, by the chopper in dc to dc conversion so by the help of dc chopper you can step up or step down the dc voltage so these are the four this is called your switched mode power supplies ply back converter and resonant converter so this is your dc to dc conversion which is uh, which means that a fixed dc is converting into your variable dc now let's come to your ac to ac converter so for example cyclo converter converts ac voltage to variable ac voltage and it it can also change your amplitude as well as frequency or input ac voltage so a cyclo converter or a uh, cyclonic converter converter converts an ac voltage such as the main supply to another ac voltage so the amplitude and the frequency of input voltage to a cyclo converter tends to be fixed values so where is both the amplitude and the frequency of output voltage of a cyclo converter tend to be variable so thus uh, the circuit that converts an ac voltage to another ac voltage at the same frequency is known as an ac chopper so a typical application of a cyclo converter is to use it for controlling the speed of an ac traction motor and most of these cyclo converters have a high power output so of the order a few megawatts and scrs are used in these circuits in contrast low cost low power cyclo converters for low power ac motors are also in use and many of these circuit tends to use triax in place of scrs so uh, this is uh, your ac to ac converter Uh, unlike an scr which conducts in only one direction so a triac is capable of conducting in conducting in either direction and like an scr it is also a three terminal device it may be noted that the use of a cyclo converter is not as common as that of an inverter and a cyclone inverter is rarely used 
So applications of power electronics. So in a conventional car, power electronic applications are a major area of future expansion. So if we look inside the audio system, for example, the amplifier in today's car stereo are usually capable of delivering 40 watt or more, but a 12 volt supply applied to an 8 ohm speaker produces 18 watt output at best. So to solve this power supply problem, designers use a boost converter. So boost converter provide higher voltage as your input voltage as compared to your input voltage. So to solve this problem, designers use a boost converter to provide higher voltage power to the amplification of the circuit. So this allows car amplifiers to generate the same audio output power as home stereo. Automobiles ignition system. Another uh, universal power electronics application is the automobile's ignition system. So thousands of volts are required to ignite the fuel air mixture inside a cylinder so that internal combustion can occur. Today's car employ all electronic ignition systems which have replaced the traditional spark plugs with boost converters coupled to transformers. Now, the next is your hybrid car. We are curious about new electric and hybrid car in which the primary electrical system is dominated by our power electronics. So, electrical cars offer high performance, zero tailpipe emission and low cost, but are still limited in range by the need for batteries. So, main problem in a hybrid car is your battery because after few uh, kilometers, you have to charge the battery. So hybrid car designs use various strategies to combine both an engine and electrical elements to gain advantages of each. Now, inverters and DC to DC converters rated for many kilowatt serve as primary energy control blocks. So if you want to know more about your uh, you know, hybrid car, then you can go uh, to this website and you can get the full knowledge of your hybrid cars, which is very, you know, popular nowadays. And uh, more, more and more research are going on these hybrid cars. And the main problem is, uh, you know, battery for this hybrid car. So we are, uh, many, many researchers are working on uh, this problem. So, if you want to know more about these hybrid cars, you can go through this website, and uh, you can get uh, you can get the knowledge of hybrid car. Now, uh, let let's come to the different elements which is used in power electronics. So one is your diode. So you can see from the diagram that uh, it has two terminal and two layer device. In detail, we will discuss it in next lecture. So here we will uh, only. Uh, you know, study about the overview of these semiconductor devices. So this is the symbol of diode, which is very important and it is uh, used for rectification. So it has two terminal. One is your anode, another one is your cathode. And it is made by a PN junction. And it has two layers. This is the characteristic of diode in which you can see that in the first quadrant, uh, on x-axis uh, we are taking voltage, on y-axis we are taking current. So after few voltages, uh, few voltage, the current is increasing linearly, almost. So uh, you know uh, when there is a PN junction, uh, uh, there is a depletion layer. After breaking that depletion layer, uh, the uh, electrons uh, and holes start to move, uh, and the current start to flow. This is your you know reverse biasing, uh, reverse biasing. Uh, characteristics. This is your avalanche breakdown. Uh, at a particular, after a particular voltage, the uh, layer will be break down and current will start to flow in your reverse direction. So this is uh, this is all about your diode. Now, next is your Zener diode. So Zener diode, uh, the you know, uh, this is the symbol of Zener diode. It also has two terminals. One is your anode, another one is your cathode. 
and in zener diode the current is flowing uh, through this direction and uh, this is your you know constant uh, constant current which is flowing uh, in reverse direction and uh, this is your voltage which is your breakdown voltage so this is your zener diode now next is uh, silicon controlled rectifier which is very important so a uh, silicon controlled rectifier as you see as you see can see in the diagram that this is your three terminal and four layer uh, uh, three terminal and four layer device and uh, uh, it has uh, three terminal like anode cathode and gate so why this is called controlling device because if you are not applying any kind of gate current it will not turn on so by applying gate current you can control this device that's why this is called your silicon control but in diode you don't have any kind of gate terminal or any control circuit so uh, uh, diode is your uncontrolled device but silicon control rectifier is your controlled device and it can be controlled by your uh, by the gate terminal of this silicon control rectifier so the basic purpose of the scr is to function as a switch that can turn on or off small or large amounts of power so it performs this function with no moving parts that we are out and no points that require replacing so there can be a tremendous power gain in the scr in some units a very small trickling current is able to switch several hundred amperes without exceeding its rated abilities so the scr can often uh, replace much slower and larger mechanical switches this is your motor control so in motor control system you can see that you are using your power electronic devices okay so this is your dc motor controller and it is your portable now ac to dc conversion this is your half wave rectifier so in half wave rectifier you can see that is your input uh, input terminal okay in and you are using one diode over here uh, that you are using one diode over here this is your load so from input terminal uh, now what what is uh, what you are uh, that is your input waveform and uh, this is your input waveform and uh, if you are using one diode so you can only convert only half wave into dc voltage okay so uh, if you want to convert your negative uh, waveform into uh, dc conversion then you have to um, you know then you have to use uh, another diode for this uh, complete conversion so that's why this is called your half wave rectifier because it is converting only half wave of your input voltage into the dc voltage and this is your load current and this is your uh, you know voltage output voltage so this is called your ac to dc conversion because it has only one direction that's why this is called your dc and it has it is uh, flowing in both the direction positive and negative that's why this is called your ac let's come to the full wave rectification so as you know that diode is a uncontrolled device and this is unidirectional if you want to convert your positive half wave as well as your negative half wave then you have to use a full wave rectifier so in full wave rectifier you you are using two diodes diode d1 and diode d2 so in diode d1 on the half wave is converting uh, positive half wave is converting because you can see when you apply positive half wave and diode d1 will be in forward biasing and diode d2 will be in reverse biasing so for positive half cycle diode d1 will conduct for next another half cycle diode d2 so this is your full wave rectifier next is your you know and this is uh, the device symbol Uh, which is very important and you must know about uh, you must have the knowledge of different symbols of power electronic devices so this is your diode and you can see that this is the symbol of diode and it has two terminal one is your anode another one is your cathode this is your positive terminal this is your negative terminal and this is your thyristor so thyristor is having three terminals and one is your anode another one is your cathode third one is your gate and uh, 
gate turn off thyristor it has three terminal one is your anode cathode and gate but it has the symbol like this next is a triac triac you can see that two two, two anti parallel scrs are connecting so this is your triac symbol it, ha it has three terminal one is your gate cathode and anode next is your npn bjt bjt means bipolar junction transistor so bipolar junction transistor also have three terminals one is your base collector and emitter next is your igbt in igbt it also have three terminals one is your gate cathode and uh, you know uh, gate uh, gate terminal uh, you know cathode terminal and sorry gate collector and emitter next is your mosfet mosfet also have gate drain and source so these are the symbol which is very important by by remembering these symbols you can easily identify the semiconductor devices in any circuit so this is the table which is very important and you must uh, have knowledge the different symbol of these semiconductor devices now like some to the different kind of circuits in which what what you require so suppose if we talk about voltage regulators so for regulation uh, a dc supply to a fixed voltage output you require voltage regulators power amplifiers if you uh, if you want to amplify your voltage and current so there are large signal amplification of voltage and current now let's come to the switches so switches are your electronic switches Uh, for example transistor which is if we talk about your diode rectifier so diode rectifier which convert from ac voltage to dc voltage then if you talk about your ac to dc conversion then in ac to dc conversion you are converting converting fixed to ac voltage to variable dc voltage then if you talk about your ac to ac converter then converts fixed ac voltage to variable ac voltage if you talk about your dc to dc converter that is a chopper so it converts fixed dc voltage to variable dc voltage if you talk about your dc to ac converter that is your inverter so it converts fixed dc voltage to variable ac voltage next is your ac to dc converter circuit and wave forms so you can see from the diagram that uh, it is converting from ac to dc you are using thyristor and you can see that the output waveform is controlling by alpha angle so by using thyristor you can easily control the output of your ac supply so that's why this is called your ac to dc converter and uh, scr is your controlling device now let's talk about your ac to ac converter in which you are using triac so you are in your input is ac your output is also ac so by using ac to ac converter you can easily get the output which is your ac output but it is controlled and you can see in the diagram that it can be controlled by the angle of alpha now let's come to the next circuit that is your dc to dc conversion in which you are using a uh, you know thyristor uh sorry bjt bipolar junction transistor by using this you can easily get the dc output so the output voltage is uh, this is your input voltage and this is your output voltage uh, so you can see that you are getting your output voltage now uh, you are also getting dc but it is variable dc rectifier rectifier connected to an inductive load so operation of a prevailing diode inductive load in which you can see that if you are using inductive load then you will get the waveform like this okay uh, in detail we will discuss in our uh, next lecture next this is your uh, three phase uh, diode bridge rectifier and uh, three phase you can see you are using three phase which is your a b and c and you are using instead of one or two diode you are using uh, six diodes and you are getting three phase dc output so this is your three phase diode bridge rectifier next is your how we control the rectifier waveform so you can see in the diagram that this is your how we control the rectifier waveform so by using this circuit you are using you are controlling on the half, only half wave of the input signal next is your dc motor so in dc motor 
you can see that the speed of DC motor can be controlled by a step down chopper. So in detail, we will discuss in our uh, uh, next lectures. Uh, this is the you know a, an overview about your semiconductor devices that in which field we can use your semiconductor device. So there are some few questions which is based on this lecture. For example, a crystal diode has so it has your uh, you know uh, one p-n junction. A great crystal diode uh, power resistance of the order of is in uh, kilo ohms. If the arrow of crystal diode symbol is positive with respect to bar, uh, then the diode is in forward biasing. A crystal diode is used as a rectifier, and the reverse current in a diode is of the order of you know, microamperes because the diode do not conduct into the reverse direction. If you connect this diode in reverse direction, means its anode is negative and cathode is positive then there will be flow of <coughs> current which is in uh, which is in your uh, you know in uh, micro amperes next is uh, the forward voltage drop across a silicon diode is about that is almost 0 0.7 volt so the duration of the pulse in a pulse triggering system for scr should be at least uh, minimum triggering pulse for the SCR must be 20 microsecond. For thyristor, pulse triggering is preferred over DC triggering because the gate dissipation is low. So this is all about your, uh, you know, uh, basics of power electronics. So now I want to summarize this lecture that power electronics is very important nowadays. Without power electronic devices, it, it, it would be very difficult to survive because in day-to-day -day life, we are using many semiconductor components or devices, which is where, which is most needed for our day-to-day -day life. For example, your phone, uh, phone charger, your uh, you know fan regulators, which can control your speed of your fan, in which we you are using triac or dial. Uh, so these are very important components or devices which is used for. You know, um, uh, you're controlling your AC or DC power. So, uh, in many field, you can you can you can see that there are a number of applications of power electronic devices. So, uh, already we have done about the applications, and uh, uh, already we have done about the applications and other things. So this is all about your basics of electronic devices. Thank you.